A new children's agenda is launched. New customs and immigration forms are implemented and Southwest Airlines inaugurates new flight service to Belize. These stories and more on this week's edition of Belize Now. Thanks for joining us on this Friday, June 9th, 2017. I'm Charlie Hutchinson. On Thursday, June 8th, the National Committee for Families and Children launched their Children Agenda 2017-2030. This new agenda is a result framework that looks at the development of children and adolescents aged 0 to 19 over the next 13 years. Andrew Pitts tells us more. The Toucan Hall at the Best Western Biltmore Hotel was occupied by stakeholders from various social work institutions as the National Committee for Families and Children NCFC officially launched the Children's Agenda 2017 to 2030. During her welcome remarks, NCFC Chair Mrs. Pearl Stewart shared the vision behind the agenda and the vastly participatory approach that was undertaken in its development. This Children's Agenda 2017-2030 is guided by a vision that Belize is the best country in the world in which to grow up and raise a family, and where the rights of all children and adolescents are respected, protected, and fulfilled, where their voices are heard, and where they are supported to realize their maximum potential. This vision provides us a common framework, and for the music lovers, a song sheet to guide our actions for the next 14 years. The participatory consultations with over 200 stakeholders and over 500 children and adolescents shape the development of the agenda you see before you today. According to NCFC, this agenda builds on the 2004 to 2015 National Plan of Action, NPA, for children and adolescents. NCFC has used the data from that NPA to determine the strengths, areas in which there must be adjustments and elements that can be continued. That has resulted in this rejuvenated agenda that is being launched. In her remarks, Dr. Susan Cassidy, UNICEF's country representative to Belize, took the opportunity to stress the importance of ensuring that there is synergy amongst the various stakeholders who are responsible for the well-being of children. She also put the children in attendance on alert, reminding them that what is being designed today will be inherited and implemented by them in the near future. So to the children who are here, we're looking to you to carry forward the baton that is actually being run through this race of development of this children's agenda. So I really want to salute the children. I want to encourage you as you move on through all that you must do, because 13 years from today, you will be sitting, implementing the decisions and carrying forward the vision that is in the document that we're launching today. According to NCFC, the Children's Agenda 2017 to 2030 will focus on the role of families and family-oriented policies in promoting education, safety, economic opportunity, and overall well-being of their members. This will be achieved through a strategic action plan that includes six transformational goals and five outcomes with the overarching goal of having a community that is connected, respected, and contributing positively to the development of all human beings. For Belize Now, I am Andrew Pitts. Travelers arriving to and departing from Belize will notice differences in the customs and immigration forms used to collect statistics. The forms have been changed to make the data collection process more effective, among other reasons. Here's more from Janelle Rodriguez. Belize's customs and immigration forms recently got a makeover. The Directorate General for Foreign Trade, DGFD, has officially launched new and improved customs and immigration forms on June 1, 2017, fulfilling Belize's obligation to carry out hassle-free travel as a member of the CARICOM Single Market and Economy, CSME. CSME Focal Point, Tricia Gideon, spoke to us about what travelers can expect in the new forms. They can expect better forms, 
Um, they will be a little longer, but the information would be very much necessary. And the instructions or the questions will be clear. We will have more fields in areas of plant, plant and animal health. We'll have more fields in the areas of tourism. But this is just so that we can support the statistical needs of these departments to ensure that we are in ensuring that the Malaysian public is safer and we also can track trends in these areas. In addition to more fields, the forms will also have the CARICOM logo to represent Belize's position as a part of the integrated movement. The, the Immigration and Customs forms, it's, it's again to go back to collect, that's the major form, it's to collect better statistics, but also to bring awareness because you'll now have the CARICOM logo on these forms. And it's trying to instill within the community, within the Belizean populace, that we are part of a bigger region. And so we no longer do things alone, but we do it as a group. Gideon told us how the forms harmonize with those in the other CSME countries. We are a part of the CARICOM single market and economy. And under that, we have an obligation to carry out travel, free, hassle-free travel for persons moving around the region. And one of the points there is to ensure that we have a harmonized form across the region. And Belize has finally implemented their obligation here. For Belize Now, I am Janelle Rodriguez. After the break, more stories, stay with us. This week I'll be talking about nutrition and healthy recovery. A mother's body has undergone many changes during pregnancy as well as with the birth of her child. She needs to heal and recover from pregnancy and childbirth. In addition to rest, all mothers must maintain a healthy diet to promote healing and recovery. The weight gain during pregnancy helps to build stores for breastfeeding and for recovery. All mothers need to eat well so that they can be healthy, active, and able to care for their baby. Some foods that can be consumed are vegetables, fruits, grains, protein, and dairy. When it comes to vegetables, you can go with dark green, red, orange, legumes such as beans and beans, and also starchy vegetables. When it comes to fruits, 100% of fruits are considered to be part of the fruit group, but the fruits may be fresh, canned, dried, frozen, whole, cut up, or pureed. Any products made from milk are considered to be part of the dairy food group. However, focus on low-fat, fat-free, and products that are high in calcium. Last but not least, go lean on protein. Focus on low-fat, lean meat, and poultry, such as fish, which is high in omega-3, nuts, and seeds. Oils are not a food group. Yet some such as nut oils contain essential nutrients that can be included in your diet. Animal fat are solid and should be avoided. This message was brought to you by NCFC and Special Envoy for Women and Children. A young and talented Belizean-born athlete is making moves in the basketball world. This past weekend, he celebrated one of his first wins at home in almost five years with the Belmopan Bandits, who faced off against the San Pedro Tiger Sharks to close the 2017 season of the National Elite Basketball League, NEBL. General Mencias has more on this story. After six months of grueling competition, family, friends and supporters of the Belmopan Bandits took to the streets of Belmopan on Monday to celebrate the team's first NEBL championship. 
The team, which boasts some of Belize's best ballers, beat three-time champs the San Pedro Tiger Sharks on their home turf on Saturday, June 3rd. One of the players who was crucial in landing the team's victory in the final two games was shooting guard Devin Daly, who has had an amazing basketball journey. Last week, we met with the 22-year-old and key influences in his life. Here's his story. The community that I grew up in, um, basketball was a big thing. And, you know, coming up, looking at uncles and, you know, family friends that, you know, played the sport. And, you know, I admired their talent, their skills, and the way they carried themselves on, on and off the court. And I wanted to be somebody like that. And, you know, that pretty much grew on me and that made me want to play basketball. From a very young age, he seemed more interested in basketball. We tried to encourage him to play football and other sports, but the main thing for him was basketball. The young man, who according to his uncle, loved gadgets and motorcycles, would begin a promising journey in the world of basketball at an early age. Devin started playing basketball with us at about, I'd say about seven, and he was playing with the big league in about standard five at about 11. So from then he knew what it was like to play on the court amongst bigger guys and more experienced guys. And as well, it taught him an experience playing with, you know, bigger, more muscular, <laughs> robust people. I had the opportunity, which I'm thankful for, to play for a national team, playing for coaches like Matthew Smiling, playing for programs like the Belize Bank Bulldogs, you know, um, the Basketball Federation, Coach Tar, SGSC, um, primary school basketball, pretty much just traveling the entire country. And, um, you know, that, that definitely opened my eyes when it comes to the basketball world. Devin played on the U15 and U17 national basketball teams under the tutelage of Matthew Smiling, who first saw Devin's potential as a high school basketballer. One particular memory of Devin, Smiling recalls, was where the young Daly outscored now NBA star and number one draft pick, Carl Anthony Tongs of the Dominican Republic team. Devin was a tournament's second leading scorer. We knew from then that he, he was somebody that loved basketball. Um, like I said, he was aggressive, had a big heart, and eventually over the years we found out that he was also a very smart player. No, he, he had a lot of smarts with him. No, he was in the top three for both scoring and rebound for that tournament, the U-17 Central Basket in Puerto Rico. Brian White and Devin Daly were two, Brian White that plays in the NEBL too, were two outstanding players in that tournament. Um, big names that they played up against was like Carl Anthony Towns, who Based for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Um, he was the NBA's first round pick coming out of college. Um, Devin and Brian played against him. And both of them had good games against players like, uh, of that status. No, Also, they had three other players that made it to the college level from the Dominican team. But like I said, that a lot of people hasn't seen the real Devin Daly play. Along the way, Devin's skills opened the doors to greater opportunities. One such opportunity came when he played in the King James Classic in Ohio, which is considered one of the largest amateur tournaments in the United States of America. There, college and professional scouts recruit the best talent in the U.S. Throughout this opportunity, made possible by then sports coordinator for basketball under the Ministry of Sports, Bernitar, Devin would later be recruited to play ball at the Lake Superior State University, LSSU, in Michigan. The U-17 national team was playing in the uh, Central Basket Tournament in Puerto Rico. And um, so I got here in August. The tournament was end of August. So it was, we, you know, we got started quickly. Um, and the first thing I noticed about Devin was his work ethic. Um, you know, he... he he really, every time we practice, you know, he was, you could tell he, not only was he giving physical, 100% uh, physical, but he was given 100% mental. Just that first month, seeing him practice um, and then seeing him compete against the best in the world, um, you know, made me realize that he's special. 
going to the you know, LeBron James tournament, he was spotted um, by the coach at Lake Superior State, the assistant coach, Tim Kisner. And um, they, they immediately, the, the first night, they told me that they were going to pretty much offer Devin um, once they got his academic information, which I already knew. He was a very solid student at St. John's. Now, at only age 22, Daly is playing pro ball in Denmark with Team Faux Nesville, where he is a shooting guard. This year, the team won its first title in the Danish Basketball Cup, a highlight of Daly's first year on the team. Devin, who started in the final game of the cup, told us about life in Denmark. Being as young as I am, you know, the, the biggest thing that I lack was experience and also not having uh, uh, as close-knit community I would say, you know, being in a city that, you know, living in a city that's around 60,000 people, you know, not having academics to help me out and, you know, close people, you know, the language barriers and all that stuff, it definitely posed a lot of challenges, but, you know, thankfully I made it through my first year and, you know, my second year should be way easier. According to Daly, pasta, power naps and practice are key things for game days, but to the people in his life, he credits his overall success. It's a combination between my mom and um, a strong family background and the community that I grew up in. Just people genuinely wanting to see me doing, do good in basketball and academics. And my mom was definitely pivotal in achieving, you know, all the milestones that I achieved so far. WhatsApp, emails, text messages, phone calls. That's what he gets all the time from his grandma, his dad, his uncles, aunts, everybody played an important role in where he is and still where he is. For Devin, although basketball has been a huge part of his life, his greatest accomplishment has been his education. He says young ballers should always have humility and a backup plan. Humility, um, you know, it's evident that one day you can pick up a ball and bounce it. The other day, you know, you, you might just not have the physical capabilities. So just, you know, knowing that any, it's literally any day you cannot play the sport anymore because of a, you know, a tragic you know, situation that might have happened. The game leaves us all before you want it to. And having that backup plan, whether it's a degree, whether it's a trade, you know, maybe not everybody is cut out to you know, sit in school or do a, a regular eight to five or nine to five. So have a backup plan and just know that you know, any day basketball can be taken away from you and that's where the humility comes in by forming good connections with people and not letting you know, whatever success you achieve get to your head. Devin's mother was initially apprehensive about basketball but soon learned to appreciate it through her son's journey. I told Devin he couldn't play ball because all I knew was a ball has to go into the net and you have to win. That was my mentality of basketball. But that he taught me, you have to get up at a certain time, you have to do so much routine, so much drill, so much workout. I'm like, hey, this is just like any other job. So you put your best into it and you'll get your best out, but there's a lot of Devin Daly's out there. We also took the opportunity to find out who Daly is off the court. Typical teenager, eats everything he can and doesn't like to wash up. He has a brother who's my youngest child. He mentors him, helps with homework when he's around. He's kind, he's caring, very passionate about basketball. Daly shared with us his goals and dreams for basketball in Belize. My goal and my dream is to have somebody, a youth, come up behind me and all the other you know, Belizean legends that played the ball way before I did to go way further than I achieved or anybody before me has achieved while getting a degree and you know, successfully finishing their program. With the new um, Civic Center being built, those kind of things, by having the, the, the right structures for, for players to, to use, I think is, you know, steps towards the right direction. Daly was awarded MVP of the NEBL Finals, finishing with a game high of 25 points and six rebounds, leading the Bandits to their first championship with a final score of 75. For Belize Now, I am Janelle Mencius. Changing up the guard and the NEBL champions are now the Belmopan Bandits in 2017. 
On Wednesday, June 7th, Belize's music ambassador, Shine Barrow, announced that he has partnered with the president of St. John's College Junior College, Mrs. Mirtha Peralta, to offer a full-time scholarship in music studies at the college. Music ambassador Barrow said that, quote, this partnership will not only allow for those talents who urgently need financial aid to get this music degree, but it will also provide summer mentorship programs for youths in at-risk communities, unquote. It has been announced that Devon Flowers, recent Wesley College graduate, is the first successful recipient of this full scholarship. SJCJC has recently announced that for the first time ever, a two-year associate's degree program in music will be offered. The institution becomes the first junior college in Belize to offer such a program. Four ambassadors presented their letters of credence on Monday to the Governor General of Belize, His Excellency Sir Colville Young. The ambassadors included His Excellency Daniel Chubro of Argentina, His Excellency Mohamed Chafiki of Morocco, His Excellency Zurab Aristavi of Georgia, and His Excellency Jorge Roman Moray of Peru. Each ambassador expressed their desire for continued cooperation and strengthened ties between Belize and their respective countries. For his part, the Governor General thanked the ambassadors for their kind words and warmly welcomed them on behalf of the government and people of Belize. The ambassadors also made courtesy calls on the Prime Minister and the Minister of Foreign Affairs. Ambassador of Argentina, His Excellency Daniel Chubro, made a generous donation to the National Library Service of Belize. The books are in both English and Spanish. The ambassador said that the contribution was an opportunity to promote Argentine culture in Belize. We are very pleased to be here in the library in Belize City to bring a, a small contribution of uh, Spanish books for kids because we think that uh, in all our uh, cultural cooperation it's very important to have books for the kids not only to know what's going on in, in Argentine literature but also for them to learn Spanish so we we'll try to just bring a few of them we're going to be sending for the 15 libraries, uh, 15 points that you have here in the lease, we're going to be sending some more books. So every kid that wishes to access to Spanish books, they will be able to do it. After the break, our segment, in case you missed it, don't go anywhere. This week, I'll be talking about nutrition, exercise, and breastfeeding. Last week's episode was on nutrition, and to build on that, exercise and everyday physical activity should also be included with a healthy dietary plan. Although most mothers want to lose their pregnancy weight, extreme dieting and rapid weight loss can be hazardous to your health and to your baby if you are breastfeeding. It can take several months for a mother to lose the weight she gained during pregnancy. This can be accomplished by cutting out high fat snacks and concentrating on a diet with plenty of fresh vegetables and fruits. Balance with proteins and carbohydrate. Exercise also help burn calories and tone muscles and limbs. Along with balanced meals, breastfeeding mothers should increase fluids. Many mothers find they become very thirsty while the baby is nursing. Water, milk and fruit juices are excellent choices. It is helpful to keep a pitcher of water and even some healthy snacks beside your bed or breastfeeding chair. Consult your healthcare provider if you want to learn more about postpartum nutrition. Certified lactation consultants can also help with advice about exercise and nutrition while breastfeeding. Tune in next week for another tip on breastfeeding. This message was brought to you by NCFC and Special Envoy for Women and Children. On Sunday, June 4th, Southwest Airlines' first direct flight from Fort Lauderdale, Florida landed in Belize. 
to mark the occasion, two inaugural ceremonies were held, one in Fort Lauderdale prior to the departure and the other in Belize. The Belize Tourism Board organized a brief ribbon cutting ceremony at the Philip Golson International Airport, which included short addresses by key personnel, giveaways, and a cultural presentation. It's notable that there's a, there's a huge interest uh, from Belize and from the tourism industry in the U.S. market. It keeps growing. We're very happy to partner with Southwest Airlines uh, on the third international leg into Belize and to know that the current international legs are expanding as we speak. You all are making history today with Southwest. This flight will be not only Southwest's first international trip to Belize City from Fort Lauderdale, but Southwest is the only carrier at Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport to offer this route. We are excited that in addition to this daily flight beginning today, we are offering weekend service to Belize from Denver, which began in March. With this, we offer service to the West, the Heartland, and the Eastern U.S. this summer, all in America's original low fare and most loved airline. Only three months ago, Southwest introduced its first flight from Denver, Colorado to Belize through a non-stop service. The airline also offers regular non-stop service from Hobby International Airport in Houston. The Fort Lauderdale Belize flight will provide yet another direct connection from the East Coast of the United States. The new flight service promises to make travel to Belize even easier, increasing the already growing tourism industry in Belize. The second leg of Honorable Elodio Aragon's countrywide tour of the police department has taken the minister and his team from the Ministry of Home Affairs to the Corozal District. The first stop was at the police station in Corozal Town, followed by visits to several police substations including Pachacan Village, San Narciso and Caledonia Village. Several issues were raised by the officers and addressed by the minister and ministry's personnel. Honorable Aragon and his staff ensured the officers that the ministry is committed to ensuring that the police department will receive the tools and amenities requested in order to execute their duties efficiently and professionally. The minister said that these visits are essential in order to apprise themselves and make informed decisions. The tour continues next week with a visit to the Cayo Formation. And that's it for this edition of Belize Now. If you want to provide feedback or send in your comments, please feel free to email us at info at pressoffice.gov.bz or visit our Facebook page and let us know what you think. We look forward to hearing from you. Have a great week. Until next time.